Wow, all-time highs across the board. Bitcoin actually hit 64.50, and right now sitting at 6,355. I have a lot to talk about today. I'll probably remember half of it. I don't like bullet points, um, but what comes to mind first was I saw the Vietnam thing. Um, was it Vietnam? Let me double check my sources. But yeah, <laughs> they're trying to block, ban, uh, they're trying to um, ban Bitcoin. And yeah, Vietnam bans Bitcoin for payments for anything. And so you have some, basically some corrupt country where they have hyperinflation and now they're trying to say, oh, well, no, you can't use this um, tool that's going to help you get out of poverty. And I read one of the first pop-ups this morning on my, uh, my news app that said, that Vietnam universities are still using Bitcoin, just don't care what the laws say. And them, a poor country like that, trying to stop a technological monster like Bitcoin, I was trying to think of an analogy, and I couldn't think of one. It's just so funny. It's like trying to stop the rain, and all you have is an umbrella. Uh, it's just kind of crazy. <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's going to be an epic fail. And what that's doing once you all right so this is the last resort like it there's always this big lash out crazy lash out like before the monster dies it has all his tentacles and it's going it's just crazy blood gore everywhere right because it doesn't want to die the governments don't want to die out they don't want to lose their power and they're trying everything they can so you know they're one of the first ones that just straight up came out and said you it's banned illegal like they're just trying to absolutely and it's just obviously not going to work. And what that's going to do, just like it does with anything, what happened with drugs and when you make drugs illegal, um, the prices just skyrocket. It's the same thing with anything. People will see, oh, wow, the, the government really is afraid and the government um, is really trying, is just super corrupt, right? And yeah, it's just, this is what happens. Now the governments are scared because they understand. It's like, holy shit, okay, so if we ban it, it's just going to cause a price jump. Um, and how poor is Vietnam going to be with the government, you know, suppressing all of this? Like, it's like saying the Internet's bland because it's not just Bitcoin. It's every single cryptocurrency. That's that's nuts. It's like telling the whole nation you can't get on the Internet. It's like it's the future. And they're, and they're saying they're trying to they're trying to keep their country so poor. They're hyperinflating, just absolutely ruining everything they possibly can. And now they're saying, well, you can't get into the next wave of technology. You're going to remain poor and there's nothing you can do about it. And when you have professors at universities standing up and saying, yeah, OK, so imagine what the general public's going to do. When you have kids and you have people to look after and, you know, you're, you're going hungry. And meanwhile, Bitcoin just keeps going up and up and up and, you know, as long as they don't ban the internet, <laughs> Bitcoin can already be sent without the internet with the satellite. It's it's like some hieroglyphic, crazy technology that a lot of people still don't understand. You can get a metal wallet and there could be a nuclear holocaust and then we can rebuild and then you can still, still recover. You can't do that with like, okay, like let's say there's like an EMP or something that knocks out everything. All the banks, everything. You're, everything's wiped out. Stocks, there's no, there's like no backups once everything's fried. It's basically, you're out of there, right? Like, there's no backbone to all of it because it's all willy-nilly. It's not real. It's just a digit and being printed, not on a blockchain, just in some fucking guy's server. I mean, it's, it's nuts how it's set, how flimsy it is really right now. And then you got blockchain, some hieroglyphic shit. So um, people just don't really appreciate the power of what's really happening right now. Um, also wanted to get into somebody. So there's a mindset. Somebody was saying that um, in my video, I found the, found the perception interesting because they were saying, okay, well, I want to try real hard. I want to do what I can. Um, you know, I want to give it all I got, but some people are just smarter than others. And like, if you have a low IQ, like most of the population, then you're set up to fail. And, 
again, the first thing that hit my mind was, yep, that's an answer. You can accept that answer. And then the very next thought was, obviously, because I always had my counter thought. I played devil's advocate. I say, well, you know what I learned? That um, dolphins are way smarter than sharks. Let that sink in. Dolphins are way smarter than sharks. You can even call a shark dumb. Would you want to be in the water with a shark or a dolphin? I'm just saying. Intelligence, IQ, this whole point of picking up a book and calculating numbers or doing patterns better than other people is bullshit. That was manufactured bullshit. IQ has nothing to do with anything. It's what you are. It's what makes you get to the next level. Some of the smartest people in the world are not the, uh, some of the richest people in the world are not the smartest. A lot of people think they are, but they really are not. And some of the poorest, not poorest, but mediocre living people are some of the smartest, the professors, the PhDs, right? You know, there's not too many PhDs that have billion, um, that are billionaires, you know, Gates, um, Buffett. I mean, you know, like these princes in Saudi Arabia, those fucking dudes don't have PhDs. Those dudes aren't, they, you know, the, those dudes are sharks. They're not dolphins. They're fucking sharks. So I don't know. You have to, what it is, is getting yourself in the right environment to succeed. Because no matter what, if you put a shark on land, it's done. And that's what a lot of people like to do. A lot of people like to put these like, because you go and you either, you know, there's just, you go to school and then they give you this grade and then it's kind of like subconsciously suppressing you if you're getting F's and they're saying you're no good or you're not going to, you know, you have to work manual labor. You're not, your IQ is low, lower than average. Dude, that's hard on a person. And when they hear that shit, a lot of people will just accept that and they will just accept their reality. They'll say, oh, well, yeah, that's, that's what it is. I can't, I'm not book smart. Not realizing, man, you don't really need to be book smart. You don't need to be anything smart, dumb. You need to be motivated. You need to show the fuck up. Put yourself in an environment around people that um, are, are have your strengths or, or, or even have your weaknesses. People that um, see the vision, that don't look at what they think of you and their misconstrued judgment, but they perceive you and look at you and all of you and what you can really be, right? People that look up to you like you're seven, eight foot tall, even though you're standing five foot tall. That's the how you have to be around those kind of people. And you got to work with what you got. You got to stop worrying about how many fucking numbers you can add, how fucking high your number, your, your artificial IQ number really is. Who gives a fuck about any of that? Get up and go get it. What do you think? Like a shark is not, oh, I wish I wasn't dumb. Nah, it's chomping on bass and probably eating a few dolphins while it's at it. So why don't you get out there? Fucking stop worrying about all this. Like uh, that, that comment, like I, I feel a lot of people feel that way. And that's just from a, a lack of manufactured mis it's manufactured low confidence. They, they, you've been battered as a child without even realizing it because you couldn't add numbers as quick as the, uh, the other kid. And that's not what it is at all. It's about consistency, putting yourself in a situation to win. If you're a shark, then put yourself in a situation to win, right? Like, don't worry about what everyone else is saying. Focus on your strengths and get better at them. Get better at them. Get better at them. Because no matter where you're at, you can train and get better. You can train and get better. And hopefully you're in a situation where you have loved ones around you that can help you and support you. And, you know, you're not getting any uh, soft pillows from me. It is what it is. It's a cool ass fucking world. And if, if you're down and out and don't have anybody look after you and, you know, you, you just don't know the game. Um, I mean, I know it's tough. It's not, it's not fair. Nothing about life is fair. I mean, except the fact that we actually got a shot at it. You know, I'd, I'd understand if we had to pay a lot of money for this life and then the life ended up sucking. But, you know, sometimes you just roll the dice. You got something for free. Um, the beautiful thing about being at peace is if you're never looking about what everyone else has and you always focus on what you have, like, oh, I'm thankful for my breath. I'm thankful for my vision. I'm thankful to be able to feel, eat, have food, um, be able to, um, work, whatever. Um, once you start being thankful for what you have and not even focusing on, you know, oh, this guy's got a Lamborghini on the moon. Who gives a fuck about all that? Like focus on what you have and keep being more thankful for the things you keep adding. Oh, I'm thankful for what I learned today. I'm thankful for growing just because I grow in my mind spiritually. People don't see it. It's not like muscles. You know, you don't go to the gym and you flex. And like, oh, look at that. I see the results. No, you don't see the results when you grow spiritually in your mind. You feel the results and it exudes you. Um, I don't have to write anything down. I've, 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 I've harped, I've sharp 
trap in my sphere. I can just come out here and just, just spews out. This isn't thought. This is just manufactured from the fact that I've carved myself into this. And this is what I can do without even having to think about it. And that's what anybody can get to when they find what really makes them tick, what really makes them go and stop worrying about the IQ. It doesn't matter about the fucking IQ. You know, it, it does not matter. Money, wealth, um, value, love. None of that knows or gives a fuck about some number, right? Cares about consistency, your heart, what you're made of. And emotional intelligence is the most important. Knowing how to handle your emotions. As, I mean, you could be the smartest person in the world and then, you know, you, you don't know how to handle fear and anxiety and kill yourself. So um, there's a lot more important things out there that's 100% attainable by all. 100% attainable. Um, you just have to start with where you are and just take a step forward, no matter where you're at. And, you know, we're not judging, not talking about this, that, or, or, or the other. Um, if you can breathe and you have loved ones around you, um, I, I consider that a big, big, big head start. Because a lot of people don't have that at all. A lot of people are just born, get sick, and die. So it's a cruel fucking world out there. Um, on, that, on that note... Vertasium is just absolutely just getting stomped down to the ground. But of course, you know, it's so far from ICO price. Um, it had, you know, it just was one of the biggest. Um, that's why this coin is just down. Like, I mean, I, I made a move. I hate even saying these things because I don't like, I don't think I, it wasn't that big of a move. I mean, but I just was trying to cleanse because I bought a lot of SYS coin. I had a lot of it and. I was just thinking that it had poked up to about 45 and I just knew it was going to come back down. The only problem is it's not really that liquid. So it's like, but yeah, either way, um, have my lures set. I don't like saying my exact numbers, but I have my lures set high and low on that's why I was coin. I like that one. Um, I haven't really been doing it with Neo too much because you just never know. The Chinese is still rumbling. You know, they're, they're, they're talking about, you know, maybe having a change of heart with the, the crypto. So I don't like playing the games. Like I said, I'm not in it to lose. So if I hold Neo and yeah, I don't do the ping pong game where I'm selling it, you know, throwing spears left and right on buy and sell. I'm fine with that because I can't be fine with throwing a sell spear and then it going up three, four X that I don't care, man. I'm telling you. It hurts when you think, oh, man, I could have did this, these little moves. But, dude, nothing hurts like selling for 40 and then it going to 100 and then going to 150. And then you have to buy back then. But if you don't, what if it goes to 500? Those are pains I don't want to fucking feel. I never want to feel those pains. So I never put myself in a situation where I'm going to sell and then it could go up past the point And I can never, especially if it's coin that I really want to be involved in because I think that it has a really bright future. I don't want to be shut out. And so I've had that pain. It's the worst pain you can ever feel. Um, it's just absolutely getting, wow, BitConnect, 235, almost two fucking billion dollars. That is absolutely insane. It's not that insane. Like, I can understand it. They've kept up the game this long. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's like a paradox. Bitcoin keeps going up. It's going to keep going up. And, um... I, I have no idea how long the legs are on it. Not even trying to guess, really. Um, see, I'm like focused on, dude, if you know me, like I'm never going to take a big swing on anything where I can't talk to the CEOs. Like hacking, we got a live interview Q&A on um, Friday on Nicholas Live channel. He does all the interviews. Um, he's a boss with it. So, I mean, you know, if I'm getting involved in ICO, dude, like I'm, I'm buddy, buddy with the CEO. Like we, we're, we're just a second away from communication. And that's the thing. I don't go on, dude, I, I've had to go through so many shit ICOs to find these good ones. Like it's not easy. There's a lot of fucking shit out there now, a lot, or a lot of redundancy or a lot of things that I just don't, don't need a blockchain. I mean, you literally have to go through 50 to find a few. And then of those few, you talk to the CEOs and you might not get a good vibe or they might take forever. Like, I'm not trying, like if you're too important, if you're too important and have to and don't have enough time to focus on your main thing, like talking to somebody like me, if you're interested, um, if, if you're going to delay, then I can't work with you because I need somebody who's hungry. I need somebody who's going to be able to communicate. Boom, 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 because things in crypto change real fast. And I don't give a, I don't care how good you think you are in crypto. 
I'm not going to get involved with somebody I can't really communicate with. And that's a lot of projects. And that's why you see some of these quote unquote superstar ICOs not doing well because they think their fucking shit doesn't stink and they're not getting into the muck and they don't realize that crypto is a different animal. You got some hungry beast out here that want it. These are people that are putting in work, putting in work. You can't just come in here with your name and think, oh, well, I'm going to raise, you know, a tenth of a billion dollars and I'm just going to stun on the game and everybody's just going to love me. It's not that way. You got to get, you're hungry, man. These people out here that really, 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 really want it. And, you know, that's these are the apples that are coming up. These are these, you know, Snapchats, WhatsApps. These are these people that are coming out of the field, out of the garages, because that's where the true talent is. Uh, it, it just is what it is. You can see the coins that don't give a fuck. I mean, you give No Limit Coin $100 million. Oh my, we give No Limit Coin $100 million. You have no idea. Top fucking, we, we'd be fucking kicking Bitcoin in the ass every damn day. I'll tell you that much. At least Ethereum's ass. So, um, they got some beast out here. And that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the long term. The people who aren't going to quit. Doesn't matter. That's what it's all about. Staying power. These coins that have a great idea. If I believe in the idea and they raise enough money to do to do what they need to do, and I can support it with all, you know, as much as energy and advice as I can. And I see every day they're making progress. They're making progress. They're in it for a long haul. And I know they're going to be doing this from a year from now and five years from now. Because people love to think in the short term. I'm thinking five, six years from now. If you thought Apple in the short term, you'd been screwed. You would have fucking, you would have, you know how disappointed would you have been if you sold at the beginning for a little bit of profit. And not thought that it could last a year, two years, five years, ten years. People don't understand. This is this is going to last for a long time. I don't foresee something better than blockchain coming out for at least another 10 years. That means everything that's in blockchain right now has long, long legs to grow. So a lot of people are going to be super disappointed selling their altcoins right now for Bitcoin. And then they popping and feeling like, oh, well, I'm going to wait for the dip. And then, you know, fucking skeleton at the train station style. And I'm just saying that this is a, I was listening to, um, Crypto, actually, um, crypto with the, the zero at the end. Omar, I listen to everybody on 2x speed, of course. And he was saying that, um, brought up a really good point. He was like, man, you know, because he, he was in the game before me. He was talking about back before the the, the, the first alt boom. Um, let's go to a let's go to a coin. Um, Golem's always Golem's always my old school, right? It's one of the one of the OGs in the game. He was talking about during the first altcoin boom. I guess it's not OG enough, actually. But first of all, there was an altcoin boom back in the day. And he was saying that he had, because the altcoins are dead for a while, he had sold a lot of them for a little bit of a profit before that because, you know, the altcoin market was dead. And then it boomed. And we just had that boom. And now we're having that lull again. However, I think with mainstream adoption right around the corner, more and more people, I think the lulls are going to be, so it's going to be a boom lull, but the lull is going to be almost like a pulse for a person who's alive. You know, you've got that, right? So, but each time, this is what people don't understand. Each time the altcoins can be on this straight line up down straight line up down right and people are like but dan it goes back to the same price so what's the point well if bitcoin's constantly rising in price and bitcoin's this flat line right here so if bitcoin's going up in price and bitcoin's this flat line right here every time it goes back to where it was right here it's more expensive in usd terms than it was right here so technically it is going in value just by hanging with Bitcoin. And that's what's always going to happen. There's not going to be the altcoins that just keep going up like this and Bitcoin doesn't catch. It's going to be an up and down. However, Bitcoin is the gangster because we're on Bitcoin's back. We're like these fucking little people on Bitcoin's shoulders just jumping and dancing like, like lunatics. And Bitcoin's just crudging us up the mountain. So you think of this giant. This is a giant Bitcoin going up the mountain. Vision is giant climbing up this mountain, and we're like these little people jumping up and down. Like, yay, take us to the top, Bitcoin, take us to the top, yay, we love you, Bitcoin, yay. You see this? We are still on the shoulders. The shoulders are flat, but we're jumping up and down like kids, but Bitcoin's overall growth is propelling us all to the Lambo moons. So I'm going to kill it there. Cheers. Peace.